Hey there, Nick Jatak is here. In this video, we're going to go over using NetCat. Specifically, we're going to cover one use case of listening on and connecting to a TCP port. This could be useful if you have some script or an HTTP server, and you want to make sure that port is available over the network. It's a great tool to make a quick test here. I will point out that there are other use cases you can use NetCat for, but in this video, we're going to be focusing on that. Now, before we jump into some commands here and see how things work, I do want to point out that there, there's a couple of different variants of NetCat. For example, there's the traditional version, GNU version, as well as the open BSD version. So these variants all have slightly different command line flags. Some of their outputs are different. Some of them expect different arguments. Arguments. Generally, they all work kind of the same, but in this video, we're going to be using the open BSD version, which seems to be the most common and widely distributed version by default. For example, on Ubuntu, it comes with the open BSD version by default. It's really easy to find in macOS. You can brew install it. And then if you're running something like Debian, then that doesn't come with any version of Netcat installed. So you'll need to explicitly install that. The package name for that one would be Netcat OpenBSD. And I'm sure you can find it on whatever Linux distro you happen to be using here. I just wanted to call that out out in case you follow along and notice that some of the flags and outputs are quite a bit different here. And by the way, if you want to just tell even before we get started here, if you're using the open BSD version or not, maybe you already have it installed, you can run netcat-e here. And if you get an invalid option here, that's a good sign. That does mean that you're running the open BSD version. You can also take a look at the man pages for netcat itself, at least in my case here, running Ubuntu within WSL. You know, it does mention here that it is the BSD version here. So yeah, that's uh, two quick ways to detect what version that you have. But yeah, let's go over the most basic case here of setting up a netcat listener. So we're going to be listening on a specific TCP port. And then after that, once we have the listener, we'll make a connection to it. So yeah, we can just run netcat. We can do the dash V flag here, which is verbose mode. It's going to give us a little bit more log output. Technically, this is optional, but I like to see certain details that we're going to see in a second here. Then we need to configure netcat to operate in listening mode. Basically, it's going to set up a uh, a listen connection here on whatever port that we put in here. And then the port could be, you know, some unused port on your system, right? In my case, I'm going to roll with 4299, but it could be whatever you want here. And uh, optionally, we can actually put in a host name here. You know, it doesn't need to be local host. It could be whatever uh, host IP or, you know, host name that you have on your network. But I'm going to leave it out by default just to, uh, you know, demonstrate that if you don't put in the host name, then it will listen on 0.0.0.0. But here, you know, now we can see that Netcat is listening on this port here. Thanks to verbose mode, we actually see this output. If we didn't, then this line wouldn't be here. But now that's like half of the story. You know, the other half of the story is actually connecting to this TCP port. And we're going to do that with Netcat as well in a slightly different way, but very similar. So, you know, let's go with dash V again, just to get a little bit more log output. This time around, we're not going to put in the dash L flag because we don't want to set up another listener on this port. You know, this time around, we're actually going to be connecting to it. And we do need to put in the host name or IP address that we're connecting to. In this case, it's going to be localhost because both things are running on the same uh, machine here. And then of course, we'll put in some port here, or, you know, I will mention that, you know, this port will align with whatever port that we put up top. So if you change that port number up top, then, you know, make sure to change it down here as well. And once we do that, we can actually see that there is a connection open uh, to localhost here on that port. It succeeded. And we can see on the listener side, it received that output here, that uh, connection received, and everything is good to go. Now, when you run this command, chances are this port number on the right is going to be different, unless there's some wild coincidence that a random port number on your side matched up with mine. You know, this is randomly assigned, so uh, don't worry about it if this port is different. And you'll notice too here that uh, the connection remained open when I did that here. So you can just hit control C here to close that connection. It's actually going to close it on the listener side as well. So that is the most basic, basic use case of using Netcat to set up a listener and then also connecting to it. But again, you know, if you have your own little script or another web server running or something like that, you know, we're not limited to connecting to a listener that Netcat actually created here. For example, you know, if I go to one of my Dockerized, you know, web application examples here for Flask or whatever, the takeaway here is it's a web app running on port 8000. And since it's a web application, you know, it's using HTTP, which is based on TCP. So we can actually use Netcat to connect to that as well. So in this case, I'm just going to connect to port 8000 instead. And then we can see, look at that, it's been successful. And um, yeah, now it's connected to that. And you can do whatever you need to do there to demonstrate that it worked. You know, this is actually pretty handy because uh, in a previous video, I did that Docker networking video on host at docker.internal. And we were using the ping tool in that video to verify that we're able to access, you know, that host name of the network. But we could have used Netcat there to go even further to make sure that we can actually open up a connection on a specific port. So yeah, that could have been uh, an option to do there. Uh, but I'm going to 
close this one out here. And, you know, I will mention too that if you were to run that cat here on a port that doesn't, you know, have something occupying on that one, then it's going to be completely normal that you're going to get that connection refused here. And uh, there's actually, a, you know, before I wrap this up, a kind of a fun little takeaway here too around just how networking works in general. I learned quite a few things here around this one. So let's say if you use Netcat like this, like we just did before, right, on whatever, port 4299. So what happens if we actually try to open up another listener on the same exact port? So let's just try to see what happens there. What? Like, I don't know, my mental model, at least of how like networking worked and, and all that is like, you can't really bind on the same port twice, but apparently you actually can here. And, you know, if we try to make this connection here to 4299, then do you want to take a guess on what's going to happen here? Three, two, one. Yeah, so like one of them received the connection, but the other one didn't. And that's was super interesting to me. It actually led me to uh, just Google around this one. And I found this really, really great answer here on Stack Overflow. I mean, lots of upvotes, people uh, even put reputation awards or whatever, you know, the bounties there. I don't know, it was one of those like brain moments to be like, okay, so now I know a little bit more about uh, TCP and sockets and how connections work here. And I don't think it's probably worth to go over this whole entire post in this video because it is... And at least for me, you know, it's operating at a level that is usually one or two levels below than what I normally do. But the five second takeaway here, though, is that it's not necessarily just the port name or number that uh, is the thing that is being checked here. There's all sorts of other values that are associated with a connection, like a TCP or UDP connection. And a, any unique combination of these values actually identifies a connection. So yeah, this post goes into a little bit more detail around this one. And what's actually pretty neat too is, you know, if you take this a little bit uh, further here real quick, let me keep this open here and I'll just open up, um, I don't know, right now on my machine, there is a, a tool called SS and maybe you have it, maybe you don't have it installed by default here, but let's take a look real quick at its output here. And this is like, I think so socket stats or something like that, right? It's just gonna, you know, take a look on the things occupying a specific port. In this case, you know, there's all sorts of other ports that are occupied on my system. I'm just grepping out 4299 here, but we can see that uh, there are actually two listeners up and running here and uh, it seems to be listening on port zero. And if you go back to here, like port zero is actually any port here. And there's all sorts of, you know, interesting details around here going into that. I don't know. I thought that was a little fun uh, aside here on using Netcat. I just noticed that I was able to bind to the same port twice. And in my mind, I'm like, wait, how is that possible? And, you know, did a surface level research and came across that one. But yeah, that's a super basic way to use Netcat. I'm actually curious, you know, what are some other use cases that you've used it for in the past? Let us know in the comments. With that said, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.